In our last lesson or last class of the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we looked at the topic of sunnatu at tadafur, the sunnah of what repellence, and we said this is a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa taala that's existed in all previous generation with the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and that sunnah is walaula daf Allah nasa baghum bi baghdin. If Allah did not repel a set of a people by another set of people, the whole earth will have become corrupted. So the Prophet ﷺ, he used to work with the Sunnah of at tadafur like the previous Anbiya before him. So we said based on this, Sunnah to tadafur came about the legislation of Al-Jihad, fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said Al-Jihad, it had stages. Jayid, and we said those stages were four stages. Who could remind me of those stages? Before I ask you to remind me of the stages, a strange request. I think there's sisters upstairs, so there might be an issue. Otherwise, I'd rather speak without this microphone. Is the echo too much for you? It's too much. Turn it off. So who can remember those four sunnah? The sunnah of a tadafur. Come close inshallah, so I'd have to shout. Bring this close. It's alright, that's recording. Now. So sunnah to Sunnah at tadafur Who can remind me of these four sunnah? The sunnah to tadafur or the four stages have one of jihad. What's the first stage? Huh? Yeah, prohibition. That jihad in the beginning was prohibited. The second stage was what? It was not mandatory. It was allowed for those who were being attacked to defend themselves. And the third stage was? It became obligatory that whenever they attack you, you have to defend yourself. And the last stage was umum, the general fighting or anyone will block the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib. After we went through this first stage, or the, these stages of jihad, these four stages of jihad, we went through how the Prophet ﷺ, he started to prepare the Sahaba for the jihad. And we said there were two forms of preparation. And what were those two forms of preparation? Physical and spiritual. Physical and spiritual preparation for fighting the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib. Now, this preparation, we said there was many battles after this, or ghazawat, before the great battle of Badr. Because what normally will happen when we get to this stage of seerah, people go straight into the battle of what? Badr. But as you know, even with modern warfare or modern war, it doesn't just happen from nothing. There's usually a build-up of tension that leads to a greater war. So likewise, when you look at the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will see that it didn't just happen all of a sudden. Rather, there was a build-up of tension. And this is what we're going to look at today. Those skirmishes or those wars or those battles that happen before Ghazwatu al-Badr. Because when they say Ghazwatu al-Badr, they say Ghazwatu al-Badr al-Kubra, the great battle of Badr. And why is it al-Kubra? Because there's Ghazwatu al-Badr al-Ula. There was a first battle of Badr. There's two battles of Badr. But we usually read about the first battle of Badr. And when you read about the, uh, sorry, the great battle of Badr, if you only read that part, you will not understand the context in which this war happened in. It's very important to look at what happened before that, to understand the context in which this war al Badr is happening. Now the Quraysh, from the very beginning of the call of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they were not pleased or happy with the call of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they came up with a number of solutions before the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to stop his da'wah. And one of the solutions they rejected immediately was what to expel the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And why did they reject this solution? Why did they reject this from the seerah? No, to expel him. They said we could expel him. That was, yes. Jazakallah khairan. They refused the option of expelling him. They said wherever he goes, he's going to spread Islam. And those people are going to come back, they're going to attack you. So that was not an option for them. So the only option we had was to assassinate and kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's the only option they had in front of them. This option, however, they didn't have a choice. They couldn't fulfill it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam escaped and made a hijrah to Medina. So they were not happy for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to go to Medina. Nor were they happy for the Sahaba Rajallahu Anhum to join the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. But now that has happened. 
the Prophet ﷺ was already in Medina. But he didn't stop the enmity. So now they started to make pronouncement of war. Now he is there, they start to make what? Pronouncement of war. The war they had initially was with who? Ahlul Makkah, the Muhajireen. But now the pronouncement of war started with who now? The people of Medina. And a proof of this is a hadith in Bukhari. In this hadith in Bukhari is about Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, Sahabi, Al Ansari. Who is Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh? Because we would say, I should always revise the previous lesson. Who is Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh? Huh? From Medina, uh huh. Barakallah. He was one of the leaders of the people of Medina. So when Musa ibn Ibn Mayr was giving his da'wah, there was two other leaders of the people of Medina that were against him. And one of them was Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, who later on accepted the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh was from the leaders of Medina. When he accepted Islam, he went to Mecca. And before Islam, he used to go to Mecca. And they used to respect him, because from the chiefs of the people of Medina. And in Mecca, he had a very good friend. And that friend was from the greatest enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Umayyah ibn Khalaf. They were friends in Jahiliyyah. So whenever he went to Mecca, he go to Umayyah ibn Khalaf. When Umayyah ibn Khalaf came to Medina, he go to the house of who? Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. So now, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh has accepted Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions that were in Medina. So he went there to Mecca, Mu'tamiran, to make Umrah. So he said to Umayyah ibn Khalaf, that, Ya Umayyah, that unzur li sa'atan, بالبيت, he said, try to find a good time for me that I could make tawaf by the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Umayyah ibn Khalif said, the best time you can go and there's nobody be around you is Nisw nahar the middle of the day, because it's extremely hot. So they went to the Kaaba. <coughs> Upon reaching the Kaaba, they approach. Falaqiyahuma Abu Jahal. Abu Jahal, he saw them. And he knows who Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh is. So he said to Umayyah ibn Khalaf, Ya Aba Safwan, man hadha ma'ak. He knew who he was. He said, who is this with you? So Umayyah ibn Khalaf said, obviously, hadha Sa'ad, this is Sa'ad. So Abu Jah said to him, that, ala araka tatuf bi Mecca aminan. He said, do I see you making tawaf in Mecca in one piece? Meaning, you're making tawaf in a state of security and a state of peace, and you're not being torn to pieces. He said, I see you in this state, wa qad, Away to Musuba, and you have given refuge to somebody who was Sabi, and Suba is the plural of Sabi, someone who's left their deen. So they never used to call the Muslims Muslims, they would call them Sabi and a person who's left in the, his deen, a derogatory term. He said, I see you making tawaf in Makkah, and you've given refuge to these people who've left their deen. And then he went on to say to him, Not only have you given them refuge, you claim you're going to aid them and give them assistance. Is that not what you've done? And then he went on to say to him, وَتُعِينُهُمْ He said, and you're aiding them. He said, أَمَّا وَاللَّهِ لَوْ لَا أَنَّ مَعَكَ أَبِي صَفْوَانِ مَا رَجَعْتَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِكَ سَالِمًا He said, Wallahi, if it wasn't for the fact you with Abu Safwan, with Umayyah ibn Khalaf, you would never have gone back to your family in one piece. He said, the only thing preventing me and us from dealing with you is what? The fact you Abu Safwan. And this is the first time in the history of people of Medina that they had to now enter Mecca with an agreement of security and to pass through safely. So now they started to make this proclaim of war, even against the people of Medina. It's only because it's you and who you're with. So now, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, he said to Abu Jahl, and he raised his voice on Abu Jahl. He said to Abu Jahl, Wallahi, if you prevent me from making this tawaf, I'm going to prevent you from something greater than that. And in another narration, he said, I'm going to prevent you from your trade going to Asham towards Medina. Because the trade of the Quraysh is to pass through the roots of Medina to go to Asham, what's known today as Syria or Jordan. At that point, Abu Jahl, he left him. But the point I want to take you away from this are two things. Number one, Abu Jahl, considered immediately Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad to be from those who are from an enemy state. And secondly, he saw the blood, not only of Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, anybody in Medina was giving refuge to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to be permissible to spill. Except if he has a what? A pass of security or safety to pass through. So they already made a proclaim of war with that. 
Also, what we take away from this is that the trade of the Quraysh used to pass through where? To the roots of Medina. And Medina at that time, it became a Dawla al Islamiya. But even though it was a Dawla Islamiya, and they were making the pronouncement of war, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, all the Sahaba, they used to let it pass through without interrupting their trade. Nor did they ever attack their caravan. Because Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, he said to him, if you prevent me from making tawaf, I'm going to do something greater than that. Meaning that caravans used to pass through anyway. These two, let them pass through. So we take these two things away from that. They made, hum bada'u, they're the one that began the transgression. They're the one that began the war. Another proof of this is a hadith. In this hadith, and this hadith is in Bukhari, I believe. In this hadith, the people of Quraysh, the Kuffar of Quraysh, they wrote a letter to Ibn Ubay. This letter was to Ibn Ubay, not only to Ibn Ubay, whoever from the people of Medina was still upon idol worship. They wrote the letter to the Mushrikeen, because they're giving up on the Muslims of Medina. They wrote this letter to the Mushrikeen, the polytheists of Medina. And they said to Ibn Ubay in their letter that, and this before Badr, that innakum awaitum sahibana. They say you've given refuge to one of our own, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're coming to fight him. And we're going to expel him from Medina. And we're going to come to you with full capacity. Every single one of us will come into Medina. But would they say come fight the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? To expel the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they went on to say, we're going to kill every single one of your soldiers. Forget Muhammad only. We're going to kill all of your soldiers. So the policy or the politics of with us, against us is not new. You're either with us or against us. So they said, And this is the Arabs, they have a lot of jealousy over the women. We're going to take your wives as our wives, going to make them halal. All of your wives, the Muslim from amongst you, the Mushriki from amongst you. And then he went on to say that Falamma Balag Abdullah ibn Ubay, when this reached Abdullah ibn Ubay, that the Quraysh are coming with full capacity, he gathered up his army, min abadatil awthan, and whoever is with him from the polities that worship idols, and they went and prepared for war to go and kill the Prophet. Because he didn't want that to come to them. And they're not Muslims, why should we sacrifice ourselves? So they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he knew, he said, لَقَدْ بَلَغَ وَعِيدُ قُرَيْشِ مِنْكُمْ مَبَالِغِ That the threat of Quraysh has caused you to react like this. So it's reached you. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to them, that which they plotted against you, and you're plotting against me, is against your own self. So he asked them, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that تُرِيدُونَ أَن تُقَاتِلُوا أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَإِخْوَانَكُمْ do you want to kill your own children and your own brothers who are with me? And this shows, subhanAllah, not only the prophethood of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the great leadership of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because tribal allegiance to the Arabs is something big. So he used that, because that's what will move them. And we should learn from this, that when you know what will move a people, use it to your advantage. And what would move those people is this tribal allegiance. Even in tribal allegiance, Abu Jahl would defend the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was an instance which we mentioned where the people had come to attack the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Talib was defending him and they said, you know what, we're all going to gather against you, the different tribe, and fight Abu Talib. And Abu Jahl is from the tribe of who? Abu Talib. He said, if you continue to disturb the Sheikh, the chief of our tribe, I'm going to join him. In fact, I'm even going to accept Islam. Out of Jahiliya, out of that tribal allegiance. So the Prophet ﷺ, no, they would not want to kill their brothers. They will not want to kill their own son. And even the Arabs contemporarily today, one of the statements of the people of Khalij, this region of the Gulf, is that they say, Ana wa akhi ala ibn ammi. Me and my brother against our cousin. Wa ana wa ibn ammi ala ghayrina. And me and my cousin against anybody else. So me and my brother could be fighting. But if our cousin were against our cousin. And me and my cousin could be fighting, but anybody who comes outside that, our war is against him. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used that to his advantage and he affected them. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told them this, they decided to pull back and attack the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So already, 
the Quraysh had made the proclaiming or pronouncement of war, that they are at war, they're in a state of war. And they saw the people of Medina, not the Muslims of Medina, but the, everyone in Medina as a people who are at war with them and as enemy state. So they began. So the war or the announcement or proclaim of war began from who? Bada'u kum. It began from who? It began from the Quraysh. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to prepare, prepare for Al-Ghazawat. And when it comes to the wars of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were certain Ghazawat and Saraya and Sariya that, that preceded the battle of Badr. Battle is known as Ghazwa. The plural is Ghazawat. Now there's a difference between Sariya and Ghazwa. What is the difference? Sariya or Bi'tha is that in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sent the companions but he never took part. And Ghazawat is that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he took part in a battle whether there was fighting or no fighting if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with them it's a what? A Ghazwa. Whether the numbers were many or whether the numbers were little it's a what? Ghazwa. As for Syria, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never with them. Secondly, as Syria, the number usually was always what? Low. Because most Syria was sent for a specific limited mission or generally to go and spy and do reconnaissance mission on the enemy. Jayid? So the first ever battle that ever happened before Badr was Ghazwatu al-Abwa. Ghazwatu al-Abwa. This battle, Ghazwatu al Abwa, it took place between Banu Dhamrah min Kunana. And this battle happened in Safar Sana Ithnaymin al Hijrah, the second year after Hijrah of the Prophet. And the amount of Muslims for this battle was Mi'atain min Raqibin wa Rajil. They had 200 men, some on horses, some were walking. But in this battle of Al Abwa, there was no fighting. So it was a battle. They went for a battle, but there was no what? Fighting. It's a Ghazwa. And why is it a Ghazwa? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with them. Secondly, Sariya Ubayda ibn Harith. This is the first Sariya. This is the first time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raised a flag with Amir in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he was not involved. And this is called Sariya Ubayda ibn Harith. And this Sariya was added by Ubaidah ibn Harith. And the number of people from them were sitting min al muhajirin 60 only. Because it was a what? A Sariya. Jayid from the muhajirin. And as for the enemies from the Quraysh, they had more than 200 horsemen and people walking on foot. And the leader of the mushrikeen for this Sariya was Abu Sufyan ibn Harb. And when they met each other at the place where this battle was supposed to take place, what initiated it was there was a disagreement over the water. Who has more right to the bitter, to the well? And the war was about to begin. Sa'ad ibn Waqas radiallahu an immediately shot his arrow. So that was the beginning of the battle. And they said that Sa'ad ibn Waqas was the first person to shoot an arrow in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first Sahim. The first arrow that was shot in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Sa'ad ibn Waqqas. And this was in what battle? Sariya. Is it a battle or a campaign that the Prophet ﷺ he sent out? However, they split it and they did not fight. He just shot the arrow and they thought, you know what, that's enough. They left. No fighting. The next thing after that was Sariya Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sent him out to Ghazwatu al-Abwa, the first battle, Abwa. On the way back from Ghazwatu al-Abwa, they reached an island. And when they reached the island, there were 13, 30 of the Muhajireen, the Muslims from Mecca, and they met Abu Jahl ibn Hisham on this island. And Abu Jahl ibn Hisham had with him 300 from the people of Mecca, and they were about to go to war. How many of the Muslims were there? How many? 30. 30. How many mushrikeen? 300. It's something we'll even think about. 300 versus 30. So now, they got ready for war. One of the people from the mushrikeen, Majdi ibn Amr al-Juhani, he stood between the two people, the two groups. 
and he separated them and said, don't fight. And they left each other without what? Without fighting. Now the tension is building. The tension is building. After that now was a ghazwa. After this issue with Hamza was a ghazwa. And that ghazwa was ghazwa al-bawat. That now the situation is serious, it's tense. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the sixth or the fourth, I'm sorry, he went out with them. Now he intended war. This was Rabi'ul Awwal fi sana thaniya. Rabi'ul Awwal in the second hair of the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This time, 200 of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went. And the intention by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ya'tarid iran li Quraysh was to raid the caravans of the Quraysh. This was full at war now. Kana fihima Umay ibn Khalf. Umay ibn Khalf had with him how many men? 100. 100 only. And the Muslims are how many? 200. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they lay for him ambush. Fi mi'a rajul. Wa alfayn wa khamsa mi'a ba'ir. He had 100 men because it was a trade caravan. How many caravans did he have with him? How many donkeys? 500. That was a big honey for the Muslims. That 30 were pre prepared to fight 300, now we've got 200, we've got against 100, and 500, Ba'ir, the Prophet وسلم, went. So he played in ambush for them, but the Prophet وسلم, he missed them. So he went back to Medina. After this now was Ghazwa al Ashira. After this was Ghazwa al Ashira. The Prophet وسلم, went out again. Jayid and he used Abba Salama to stay in Medina. It was the Emir. So Prophet Sallallahu because he's a Ghazwa, he was with them. So someone had to be in charge of Medina. And this from the Fadail, the excellence Abu Salama, the first to make Hijrah. He has so many excellences. That's why his wife, Radiallahu Anha, said, Umm Salama, I cannot marry anybody after this man. And Prophet said, Inna lillahi wa inna said, Allah will give you something better. So who proposed to her after that? Abu Bakr Siddiq. She refused, or rather it was Umar that proposed to her. She refused. He kept saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allah will give you someone better. And we proposed her after that, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. She refused that. We ended up marrying Umm Salama, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Salama was in charge of Medina. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went out. This was during the light night of Jumadi al-Akhirah. Jayid, Jumadi al-Akhirah. They went out to meet them, but they didn't come across the Quraysh. The same van they wanted to raid again, and they already missed it by some days. They had missed it by some, some days. After that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sixth thing that was happened was Sariya Sa'd ibn Abu Waqqas. He sent out Sa'd ibn Abu Waqqas. He sent out Sa'd ibn Abu Waqqas fi Sariya qawamaha thamaniya rahat min al-muhajirin. He had eight families from the muhajirin. Jayid until they reach Al-Hijaz, Al-Hijaz. And they still didn't find anybody. They came back to Medina again. Now was the seventh battle. And that's the Ghazwatu Al-Badr Al-Ula. The first battle of Badr. And the cause of this battle is that Ibn Jabir Al-Fahri, it attacked the place where they kept the Muslims kept their camels in Medina. And he stole some camels and some cattle. So the Prophet ﷺ, he sent the Sahaba after him, to chase after him. Jayid, until reach a wadi, until they reach a valley called Safwan. From, it's near Al-Badr, it's one side of Badr. Jayid, however, they couldn't catch up with him. Walam yudriku. So they didn't catch him. And this was a Gaza, so who was with them? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So he came back to Medina. This was the first of Badr. After that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the eighth thing he did was to send out a Sariya. Now another group of Abdullah ibn Jahsh al-Asadi ila Nakhla. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said Abdullah ibn Jahsh and eight family members from the Muhajirin to Nakhla, which was the south of Mecca, very close to Mecca from the last of Rajab. And the purpose of this was what? It's a Sariya. So what's going to be the purpose in most cases? Reconnaissance. So they didn't go to war. They went to spy and get news concerning Al Quraysh. That's what they went to do. They didn't go for war. Walakin, as they were spying a qafila at Tijariya Al Quraysh, a trade caravan passed by them that belonged to Quraysh. So they killed the leader 
or the commander of that trade caravan and his name was Amr ibn Hadrami and they took us prisoner two from those men and they were Uthman ibn Abdullah I'm going to read their story next week and also Hakam ibn Kaysan and then they returned with the caravan the goods of the Quraysh and these two people to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Medina and this happened in what month? Rajab and what is special about Rajab? Naam min ashur al hurum from those months, sacred month, it happened in Rajab. And even the Mushikeen, they respected this in Jahiliyyah. Then the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down. That, الحرام, they asked you about the sacred month, fighting in, in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fighting in the sacred month is a major sin. ولكن, however, However, though, to prevent someone from going to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelieving in it and the masjid al haram and to expel the rightful people from it is greater in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became happy with this. Then after all of this led to the great battle of Badr, which we're going to cover next week, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to look at the great battle of Badr. But before that, we're going to look at the story of these two captives and we look at the battle of Badr. When we cover the battle of Badr next week, inshallah ta'ala, we'll go back to Ayat Ahkam, which is the Siyam. The next thing to come down was Siyam. So next week, inshallah ta'ala, we'll look at the battle of Badr. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha anta